Hello and welcome to Porting and Polishing Tips from CC Specialty Tools. Uh, you can find everything you see tonight online at ccspecialtytools.com. You're here with uh, TJ and Blake. We're going over uh, porting, some very basic porting on an, on an aluminum intake. Nothing uh, super special here, just some basic stuff. Uh, this is a typical uh, inline four cylinder intake like you'd find on a lot of Dodges and things of that nature. We're going to go over a few quick tips. Uh, first thing that we want to go over is I'm going to show you. This is a little catalog that you need to be familiar with. It's porting tools from CC Specialty. Uh, they're known worldwide. Um, there's probably more people with world records and uh, world championships that uh, use their tools than anything anyone else you'll probably ever find. It's a good company. It's who we work with. Uh, well, let's just jump into the intake here now. First thing on the intake, like I said, this is some basic porting. Uh, you'll notice that this is a gasket here, that we, an old gasket. We'll replace this one, but it kind of gives you an idea. The uh, lines <laughs> between what the factory did and what it should have been are way off. Not, not even close, to be fair. So we've taken a scribe, uh, marked those out. I know you probably can't see on the video good, doesn't matter, because whatever you're doing will be a little bit different. What we're showing you today, it's just some basic techniques. If you're doing more than what um, come factory or stock, you're probably going to have to get a little measuring tool and mark these up and make sure you get your measurements right. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Uh, it's easy to take the aluminum off, not quite as easy to put it back on. So what we're going to be working with here mainly are carbide burrs. You'll see several of these used a long shank and a short shank. Um, this short shank may look a little, it's a, a little bit different, it's one I prefer, but uh, it's finer flutes here, it's smaller flutes, it's uh, a little bit less aggressive than just a regular spiral cut, but it works perfect for what I'm doing for basic porting. If you're moving more aluminum, you might want to step up to uh, aluminum hog, uh, some of the drag racers use those a lot. You'll, uh, you know, you can get a whole lot more metal out here a lot quicker with that. Probably going to need some porting wax and things to that nature to use those. But anyway, some of the drag racers use those. That's not what we're using. Not where you're using a little bit of a little short shank and long shank uh, spiral cut. Uh, they also come in diamond cut like you see on this right angle. Uh, I'll give you a little tuner trick. A lot of the angles that you think, how in the world did they get to that? with a carbide burr. This is the trick. Right angles. There's a, this is a larger 3MC one that can use quarter inch, but you'll also see them um, use a 1MC and a 182 and even down to a little 300 AMC. These right angles can get to, can reach into places and get at some odd angles that you have no other way to get to. Uh, another thing is on carbide burrs is uh, you can get these little eighth inch shank. They're a lot smaller. This one's a straight head. It's one of my favorite ones just because it's, it's easy to work with. It's a it's a fairly simplistic cut profile. And they can get any even harder to reach errors to do some porting. We probably won't be using this as much unless I find a little odd angle. But anyway, let's jump right in and start with basic cutting. Basic cutting here, I'm watching my line. I'm leaving a, I leave just a few hundredths of a millimeter to work with. Um, and you can see the blue one here. That's how we put the mark in anyway, so we can see it without glare. But um on basic porting, I'm, I'm, going, I'm not going to be moving a lot of metal, so I'm going to be using this, this finer fluid carbide burr. What I'm going to be doing is using it kind of like a paintbrush. I'm moving. Moving the wall. Can you see that in front of me? Mm -hmm. okay. Moving this uh, wall over to the line. <coughs> now, when I get, one of the techniques I want you to see is when I get into the corners like this, I'm slowing. I'm slowing my RPMs way down. That makes it easier to follow this radius correctly. I'm going to do the same thing over here on the other side. Uh, the reason I do that is, as you can see, if once you get your RPMs up, these things can kind of chip and chatter and, and start to skip. That's from having the RPMs too high. If you're working with pneumatics and air tools, that's one of the things you can run into. The other thing you can run into is you can start to heat this aluminum up and actually harden the metal, change the metallurgy, and that kind of works against you. So uh, these uh, flex shaft tools that we use that you can get from CC Special, they work great. 
Uh, they're always going to do the job, like I said. You got professionals all over the world using them. Uh, other thing is when I'm out here on the edge, on the actual, uh, this is the outlet going into it, you know, the head would be on this side. So this is from the intake going into the head. I am, uh, when I'm at the opening here, I'm using these little short shank carbide burrs. When I start to work up in to the runner, I'm going to use these longer shanks. Four inch, we even got, there's even six inch ones you can get. And they're going to help you, same principle. I'm going to it down. See how it starts to channel? That, that's a little bit worse. So the reason you want to use the shortest shank burr that you can get away with is it makes it a lot easier to control. If you see how I'm reaching out in there at a high RPM, it's going to start to sputter. Now let's do it at a slow RPM. Lower RPM, easier to control. We can make more precise cuts. Uh, shorter the shank, easier to control. It will tend not to bend and start to get off center in helicopter. So just a, a handy little tip is use the shortest shank birds that you can get away with. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Another thing here is casting marks. Uh, I don't know if you can see it good. This runner on the right, we haven't really touched. But it has a huge casting mark going up. Can you see that at all, Blake? Uh, huge casting mark. The great thing about the ball vice stand is you can rotate this really good. Can you see that outer edge there now? Huge casting mm -hmm, mark. I can see it now. There. Huge casting mark going up through there. It, uh, same one on the other side. These things are cast, not machine cut. So that makes a difference. Uh, factory does the best it can, you know, within manufacturing specs and whatnot. And these are manufacturing, but they can't do everything perfect. If you look over here at one of these other runners, it's one to the side I've, I've finished here. You can see it's perfectly smooth um, all the way up. There's no casting flaws, no bumps, no ridges, no, nothing more than... Air has a hard time flowing over more than a you know, 7 degree angle. So you try to rough that out as best you can without compromising structural integrity. Fortunately, on the intake side, there's not a lot of structural integrity necessary. It's not weight bearing on a lot of things. So still, you don't want to get this uh, runner wall too thin. But uh, like I said, you got a little bit different to work with than you do like on the head and things to that nature where you have to worry about water jackets and stuff like that. You'll notice this finish is a nice little texture, smoothed out, but still textured. Uh, that helps fuel atomization, uh, air, the air boundary layer comes into effect. It helps uh, by increasing the surface area, it helps reduce surface tension and fuel sticking to uh, sticking to that runner wall on things that aren't direct port injected. So that's another thing that has, that's involved here. After I'm through on a runner like this with the carbide burr, I've got the casting mark smoothed out. I'm going to go in here with things like this. Uh, this is a little cross buff, mounted on an AMC that I just took the guard off of, um, and a little sanding rail here. Those are for doing your, you leave just a few uh, tenths or hundreds of a millimeters to work with on the edge to smooth those up. Uh, what's nice, I'll show you right quick how well these work up in here. And you can take one of these little AMCs and run it all the way up back to the inlet. Can you see that on there, Blake? Mm -hmm. And smooth that out. Of course, this I'm just starting on. I'm doing this to show you some basics of it. But uh, you can run those little boogers to this little atom. And 20 atom C will do the same thing. They both work great. For their slim profile, they can work back up in here to most runners and very hard to reach areas. These little cross buffs will uh, bend and conform to whatever you're working in. There's different... Um, there's different coarseness grit. As uh, it's not really grit because it's a sponge-like thing, but uh, similar to grit, you can call it 80, 50 grit, 120, 2, 220, that kind of stuff. And you, you can get different grits. Uh, they're just mounted on a little uh, eighth-inch spiral mandrel. You can actually mount them on long shank spiral mandrels, things of that nature, if you need even more reach. So, very handy little finishing part. Um, not uh, like I said, there's there's not a whole lot of other stuff 
involved with this. I know they try to act like there's voodoo and black magic, but I promise you me and Blake didn't sacrifice any uh, animals or say any magic chants, did we? That, no. no. Okay. So we're going to that. Um, it's moving. Oh, one thing I do want to point out here. A mistake some people, a couple mistakes I see people make is right here is they'll move it over, they'll mark out the line with their new gasket and they'll move this edge over to that line but then they'll leave like a 45 degree step in here. That's actually detrimental, same thing on the head side, same principle. Don't leave those big steps, don't halfway do it. Um, try to keep this as straight into there. I know obviously because of how this aluminum shape, you can't get perfectly straight but you try to work this into your surface structure as close to that as you can. The other thing is, think you, uh, when you get on the exhaust side of your head, think about what's your high, what's your high pressure area and low pressure. I mean, your high pressure area and low pressure area, and bear that in mind. Um, you know, intakes you get a little bit more room to work with. There's a little bit more leeway uh, on when you get to the head. We'll pro hopefully have a head in here before long that we can show you a video on that. Uh, another thing on a head is on the exhaust. Uh, Outlet side. I'm going to, the manifold. I'm going to leave slightly larger than this lip on the exhaust side, simply because that leaves that little lip there. Uh, the returning pressure wave, return from the exhaust, is actually going to hit that little lip and break it up and dissipate it somewhat, thus improving your flow. But like I said, when we get to the head part, we'll go over that. Uh, this is just in the basic stages. I've, I've only did two runners, so I'm still uh, just working, doing got a lot of work left to do on this intake smoothing out these uh, casting marks and things of that nature. Uh, like I said, on the textured finish, when I get finished with that, I'm going to go back over it with this, but I'm not going to get it down to about what I'd say a little bit above you, the finish you get with a 200 grit, um, 200 grit sanding roll. And so the finish, you, you think, think dimples on a golf ball except smaller. Um, what else we got to go over? Pressurized intakes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mine now you, you do have to realize if you if you're doing turbos, um, if you're doing a pressurized intake, something with turbos or uh, supercharged, you got you have a different principle. I am going to I am going to run one of these in here to a finer grit and get this down pretty smooth, because air when it's under above two psi, it's going to start to its dynamics are going to be more like that of fluid, and. Uh, yeah, you're going to have a polished intake in those cases because you're working with PSI, whereas this is just depending on uh, atmospheric pressure somewhat for its, uh, for its airflow. So supercharged and turbos, different principle on those two intakes. You might see us do one of those later. we got a high-rise V6 one that we want to work on. Uh, but all these principles you're seeing about metal cutting, using the carbide burrs, abrasives, all are going to apply to basically anything you're doing. Like I said, this is for basically a little tuner car setup. But uh, even if you get to a big dog like this ZX, Blake's uh, ZX-14 back here, same principles when you're modifying something like that. The more air in and fuel in you can get, the more exhaust you can get out the faster with a better flow, better trajectory. Trajectory is another thing that we can, can spend hours literally <laughs> talking about trajectory uh, and velocity. but Improving those, those fairly simplistic fundamentals uh, is what is going to improve horsepower, improve performance. The factory does what they can, you know, for manufacturing ease and things of that nature. There's a lot of room in, for improvement. We should have a few motorcycle head uh, heads that we're going to go over two-stroke and four-stroke later. That you can see a little bit more of these. But these same principles of cutting, taking your time, measuring, getting your cuts right, working these, uh, working these ports, uh, are going to apply to basically whatever you're doing. Like I said, from a big dog like this down to a little bit, little bitty scooter. So uh, yeah, and that's uh, that's. Uh, we're going to sign off here, TJ and Blake uh, from CC Specialty Tools. Like I said, you can find us online at ccspecialtytools.com, and uh, be sure to ask for one of our catalogs or print off our catalog online. It's going to have all the uh, tools and equipment accessories you need for doing a great job at porting and polishing.